If you want to use an HDRI in Unreal Engine 5.4, first you're going to go up to your cube plus sign, quickly add to project menu, and you're going to type in HDRI and add an HDRI backdrop, double click, and now we have this object in our scene. First things first, if you go up to your settings in the top right hand corner, you need to go to plugins and type in HDRI. You must have the HDRI plugin enabled, otherwise you won't have this object to add to your scene. What the HDRI backdrop is, it's a blueprint. And this blueprint is a combination of two actors. The actors is gonna be geometry, which is this shape of the HDRI. And if we hold right click and move around our scene with WASD, we can see that we have this weird teardrop shape sort of thing in our scene. And then we also have a skylight. So the HDRI backdrop is basically simple Unreal Engine tools just combined into one. Now the problem with using the HDRI backdrop, in my opinion, is it's not quite clear on what you're allowed to use. In the HDRI backdrop main blueprint option, which we can see in the outliner here, we have this thing called a cube map, and it's basically a .hdr file. So an HDR is the only thing that Unreal will read to use as an HDRI. Let me explain this really quick. Let's say you go to polyhaven.com like so, and I have this sky and you downloaded an EXR. I'm gonna hit download right here and I already have it downloaded. So here we go. Let's go over to Photoshop really quick and I have the file imported, but we need to make sure that we do one thing. When you import it as an EXR, you must go to file, save as, and then you're gonna see a couple options down here. By default, if you import an EXR into Photoshop, it will be a .exr file, but you need to set it to a radiance file or a .hdr. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this really quick. I'll just delete the old one and just to prove it, let's go ahead and replace it and let's go over to Unreal Engine again. And I'm gonna find my folder for my HDR file. So I have two files. I have my EXR, which I'll use as an example, and then I have my HDR file. I named them differently so then we can know which one is which. So let's go ahead and drag this into my content browser in Unreal Engine 5, and we'll see these two objects populate in our scene. Now, before we go any further, if you go to your Unreal Engine project in the main content folder, I always do recommend just right-clicking new folder and make an HDRI folder so you can save all of your HDRIs for this project. So now I have these two files in my content browser. I have this texture, which is the .exr, and the texture cube, which is the HDRI file. If I try and select my HDRI backdrop and drag the texture on top, red doesn't work. So instead, what we have to do is we have to take the texture cube, any conversions that we do, and drop it on, and now it's gonna replace that object. Now, if we fly and zoom into our scene, it's doing some weird stuff because the size of this HDRI and this HDRI backdrop object is not relative to our scene. I have a much larger uh, backdrop that we want to create light on. So first thing I'm going to do is go into the blueprint itself, and I'm going to set the size to, let's say, 3000. And now that's going to fill it out and help light things a little bit better. And with this, I can take the projection center or the object and just scooch it down. And that's going to help light my scene just a little bit. Now, in general, when it comes to lighting with an HDRI, you will typically use it as like a fill light or an ambience light. And then you'll go into your lighting panel under your place actors menu and you'll go ahead and add some extra lights on top of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and preview this light really quick, bring it over there and cool. Now my MetaHuman looks a little bit more lit. Now there's a couple problems with using the HDRI backdrop that I don't like. The fact is that it's a blueprint, if I wanted to render an image uh, transparently, then I wouldn't be able to use the HDRI backdrop. So what this means is that the HDRI backdrop is showing the geometry when you render, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. And I'm gonna prove that the HDRI backdrop is just the skylight lighting our scene. So I'll type skylight right here, add a skylight, drop it in, and I'll take this same HDR and make sure that I go to my source type for my skylight and set this to specified cube map. And then I'm gonna take this cube map that we imported and drop it into my scene. And now we're back to where we started. So what the HDRI backdrop does is it creates geometry in our background to help uh, our render if we were rendering something like an environment. But if I delete my background object, we're just getting black. 
And depending on the project that you're doing, that might be what you want. So if I were to go into my camera right here, I can see my scene. Let's go ahead and add my focus. So we're focusing on everything. And I'm gonna go ahead and quickly render this shot out. I'm gonna go to my level sequence, add level sequence, put this here and type in HDRI and go ahead, add my camera, hit the clapboard right here. And under my settings, I wanna to go to my unsaved config for this HDRI image. We cannot use a JPEG because it does not have transparency. So we're gonna delete the JPEG right there and go to our settings and add a PNG sequence. We wanna make sure that we write an alpha and then we have to go to our deferred rendering tab and in include our accumulator includes alpha button right here. Click accept and let's go ahead and save this to my desktop. I'll go to my output directory, find my desktop and select that, accept, and then make sure that we are only rendering one frame. So I will go one frame forward, set my out point and the focus is not gonna be great. It's not gonna be the greatest image, but just to prove that if we were to render this out without the HDRI backdrop plugin, instead we are using just a skylight. We have this image rendered out and uh, I have it over here. And hey, look, we have a transparent image. Transparent being if we go into Photoshop and we drag this image on top. Hey, look, it's transparent. So the reason why I use the skylight 99% of the time for my work is in Unreal, I will build my sky and my environment to be a little bit more designed rather than letting the HDRI backdrop plugin do it for me. Again, it really depends on the project that you're trying to do. I'm gonna show you one more thing now, and that is how to create a space background using a texture cube map. So I am a subscriber to the Grayscale Gorilla plug-in stuff, they make a lot of really good assets for 3D artists, and I love using a lot of their space renders or space EXR HDRI files, but again, a lot of their content does come in as an EXR, so I do need to convert it. Now, to do this, what you need to do is go into either After Effects or Photoshop and convert it into a HDR file. I'm gonna go ahead and drop this into my After Effects project and show you the other method. I have this EXR here. Let's go ahead and load up this space sky. I actually don't like this one. Let's do uh, space stars, import this, click OK, and let's take a look at this image right here. Cool, we got some stars. We need to go ahead and add a single frame for this. Let's go ahead and make a new comp. We're gonna hit the N key on the keyboard to set this to a single frame and then right click in the work area and do trim comp to work area. Hit control M on the keyboard to add this to our render queue. And then we need to go to our output module and go to custom. We need to set the format to a radiance sequence. Now, if you have a lot of HDRs that you need to convert, this is what I would do. And I would just make an image sequence. I'm just gonna click okay, cause it's just one image. I'm gonna set the output for this and I will find the folder that I need which is going to be right here and drop this in like so and hit the render button. Now this is a 10k image because uh, it is just a very large image and we're going to let that render. It's going to take a second. Oh, it's already done, sweet. And then we're gonna go to our HDR file and we have this almost 200 megabyte HDR file. Let's go over to Unreal and drop this into my desired folder and put it into my content browser. We have this texture cube in our scene and now we're gonna go to my materials folder here and we're gonna go right click and make a new material. We're gonna call this space background, sweet. So now we can double click on this material and we're gonna get our material node graph. Now the reason why I like using the HDRI workflow is now we can actually create our own faux fake sort of HDRI backdrop. So with my material window up, I'm gonna go into my content browser and drag this texture cube map in and there's gonna be a problem. If we take a texture cube map and pipe this into the base color or the emissive, we're gonna get an error and that's because it's a texture cube, not an actual texture. So you could do some interesting things. You can create another system similar to this just using a texture, but for me, old habits die hard. So we need to make sure that we can project this over our little environment that we're gonna make for space. 
Let's go back into our material and let's make sure this can work for our fake HDRI backdrop. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click and add a, looking at my notes, sky atmosphere luminance disc, this thing right here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple other nodes. First, I'm gonna add an add node right here. And then I hit the A key on my keyboard and held the A key and then clicked and added the add node. Then I'm gonna hold the M key on my keyboard and add a multiply node. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the multiply and the texture cube that we have in our scene and plug this in. And then in the B slot, I'm gonna hold one on my keyboard and click in the empty space of my node graph. I'm gonna right click on this parameter right here and set convert to parameter and we'll call this emissive like so. We're gonna pipe this B slot in and set this to one. And then we're gonna take this multiply and this add node and pipe it into the emissive color. And then we're gonna go ahead and take this sky atmosphere light disc luminance and pipe that in over there. And again, we're getting this error with this texture cube and we need to basically set the UVs for this texture cube. So we're gonna right click and move over just a little bit. And we're gonna right click in the empty space and type in vector or camera vector world space like so, and just pipe that in and now we should be getting our emissive, but we're getting the base color. All right, so now we're gonna take this add and also pipe it in there. So now we get this sort of look for our material. Let's go ahead and save that by hitting the save button, let it save, close this, and we're gonna go ahead and add a giant sphere to our scene. Let's we'll take this sphere right here and we're gonna go ahead and center it out and set the uh, size to like 5,000 by 5,000 by 5,000, like so. And then we're gonna go ahead and take this material and drop the space background on that object. Now we do have to do one more thing and that is we have to go into our material, make sure that we select our master material node thing right here and make sure we check two sided. So we're gonna see the inside and the outside of it. Hit save, go ahead and close and now we get our sky like so. Now the reason why I do it this way where we now have this big sphere creating our sky is that if we go to our HDRI backdrop and drop it in, let's go ahead and try and create the same thing. Let's center up our HDRI backdrop. Let's go ahead and find our HDRI and drop it into the cube map. And the problem with the default shape of the HDRI backdrop is it's a weird teardrop. So we get this weird funky look versus if we look at that sphere that we just created, we now have a, a it makes it look more like space. Now you could very well go into your HDRI backdrop and if you go into your geometry tab over here, let's go ahead and find the geometry static mesh and then we can find maybe a editor sphere or editor sky sphere. Maybe it'll do what we need it to do. Let's go ahead and hide my previous sphere. And it looks like it's doing uh, pretty much the same thing, but I've always had a little bit of a weird funky issue. And if you were just getting started with Unreal and you select a sphere that is not correct, as in the normals or the polygon faces are not in the correct direction, you may run into an issue where your HDRI is black and doesn't show up. So long story short, I wanted to make this video and show a couple little gotchas because in my last HDRI video, some people were like, Jags, some of this stuff isn't working. I don't know why. This is why basically long story short, there's a lot of little gotchas in Unreal and sometimes that you just, have to try and figure it out. So I hope you answered some questions with all of that. And uh, that's how you either make a sky backdrop with some sky stuff. Thank you to Grayscale Gorilla for making some cool space background star things. You could do it the automatic way with the HDRI backdrop if you want to, or you could do the manual way that, like I showed you earlier with the material. Okay, we're done. Go do something else. Go enjoy the rest of your day. I hope you learned something. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below. Questions, comments, concerns, whatever else, comment section is down there for that as well. And I will leave you with the final tip, and that is to eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight. One. And you will make some cheese. Goodbye, my friends. Bye.